Hi everyone, welcome to Season 3, Week 5 of the Los Altos Juice Frauds Team Builder Dynasty and this week we will be playing the Wyoming Cowboys. The Juice Frauds are coming off a disappointing defeat at Ohio, but prior to that we have finally beaten our arch rival Utah. And so we are 1-1 one one on the season, so here we go, 3rd and 6, Wyoming gets to start the first half with the ball. And they almost got completion to the running back Wick, but for some reason he dropped the ball. Very unexpected, but we'll take it. So we get the ball back after a punt. We got two guys open, and we pick out one of them. It's Ball. He hangs on to the ball in traffic. Nice job by Warren Ball to come up with that. And now, two men under defense. Frustrates Freeman. Freeman doesn't have anyone open, and eventually goes down. And that's part of the story of the game, in the sense that Wyoming just continued to play two men under, and that was... One of the formulas for our loss against Ohio is that Ohio played two men under a ton. And even though I have some plays to beat two men under, they're not nearly as profitable from an expected value perspective as my deep balls. And as a result, uh, our offense really suffers. But here, luckily, Wyoming is unable to convert on third and ten. So we get the ball back after Wyoming punts. And then here, Freeman scrambles, he scrambles, he keeps it alive, he gets to the Johnson! What a clutch catch in traffic! Dangerous pass in between two guys, and Johnson's able to come up with it for a first down to keep the drive alive. Great play, phenomenal play. Here it's two men under again. I just didn't have the confidence to throw anything at that point, so we take another sack. It's third and 18. It's two men under again, and we're sacked again. So Wyoming gets the ball after we punt. Uh, car scrambles and he gets the first down. Here we go, another uh, another first down uh, completion across the middle. So Wyoming is really working their way down the field. This time car drops back, he's got Montgomery. We almost stopped him short of the first down, but it was only on second and seven, so it wouldn't have made a difference anyway. So it's another first down for Wyoming. Car drops back to pass. This time he's got Wick, and Wick gets another first down. This time they fake the handoff, and Carr takes it himself, makes a few duck moves, and gets inside the 5. Just a tremendous run by the Wyoming quarterback. Now first and goal, they give it to Wick. Wick shakes off a defender who should have had him in the backfield, shakes off two more guys, and takes it in. So Wyoming is up 7-0. Not a good start considering that it's already in the second quarter. So Freeman looks deep, he shakes off a defender! And another guy almost tackled him, but no! And BJ Kelly, our star receiver, comes back to make the catch. Great play by BJ Kelly. Clutch play. It was offsides anyway, but it's still nice to get, uh, get a long completion either way. And here Freeman's gonna throw BJ Kelly open on the fade route, and Kelly's got it! It's a touchdown! So 7-7, seven, seven, we are battling back against Wyoming. Now a couple plays later, it's 3rd and 11 for Wyoming. Carr drops back to pass. He's got all day to throw. He throws, it's picked! It's picked by our freshman phenom, Calvin Smith, the free safety. And he is playing really well as a backup free safety. Of course, uh, Davenport is our starting free safety who's playing really well. So now we're trying to take down the clock. Given that it's near the end of the second quarter. And Freeman gets a huge unexpected run and upended at the one foot line. Which is extremely beneficial to us because it lets us take more time off the clock. Whereas if he scored, Wyoming would have had 40 seconds left to try to do some damage. Whereas now with 15 seconds, they cannot do damage. And we take over uh, to start uh, the second half. But unfortunately, Freeman takes another sack and now it's third and 11. But this time we got a man wide open, but for some reason I decide to go to Robertson instead of Cunningham. I think Cunningham could have had a touchdown there. It's a bad decision on my part. So Wyoming takes over, it's third and three, and Norman's got an in traffic for a first down. So it's still a very tight game. And one thing I noticed is that teams that don't play hurry up offense tend to play better against us because they limit the number of possessions each team, uh, each team gets. And they really uh, make each possession count. So if I throw a couple interceptions, it's magnified. If I only have, let's say, eight possessions a game, 
uh, I throw two interceptions, that's 25%, that's pretty bad. Whereas a team that plays hurry up will get maybe 10 possessions a game. And if I throw two interceptions, that's not as bad. But here we're able to stop them on fourth and one, but they decide to go for it. So here, Carr drops back. He scrambles, he shakes off a defender, and finally two guys converge to stop him before he gets to the first down marker. It's a big stop there for the South Coast Juice Frogs to limit them to zero points. But unfortunately, coming right back out, we throw a disastrous interception of DJ Kelly. And not only that, we let the defender return the ball for 20 yards. And we almost caused the fumble recovery, but no, their, uh, their player gets the fumble. But two plays later, it's third down again. Carr looks to throw and just throws it out of bounds. But Wyoming is close enough that they kick a field goal, so now it's 14-10. We no longer have our 7-point lead, but now we got Cunningham on the deep route. But this time, he's got a 40-yard gain. Unbelievably, it's already the third end of the third quarter, we only have 10 points. No, 14 points, which is still low for us. But here we throw the ball, and the ball is wide open. Great catch there to get us inside the 10. And now third and goal. We'll give it to Nichols, and he's stopped, but not before he's dragged out at the one-yard line. So a crucial fourth down coming up, and we get to Cunningham, and he actually walks into the end zone. Very clutch conversion there. If we did not score 14-10, it would have been very difficult to play defense, but now it's 21-10. It's much easier to just lay back in coverage, given that there's only three minutes left. And we stop the running back uh, behind Line the line of scrimmage, so now it's 3rd and 17, they got the ball to Norman, but Norman fails to gain the first down. The 4th and 2, Wyoming has to go for it. They give the ball to Wick, and we were ready for it this time. And Wick is taken down behind the line of scrimmage. And now we can go into total ball control mode. 3rd and 5, Cunningham goes left the middle, it doesn't get much. But we chewed off all of Wyoming's timeouts, and we kicked the field goal to maintain a two-touchdown lead. And Wyoming has two minutes with no timeouts to try to do some damage. That's a good start to get a first down, to keep uh, keep the ball rolling, and stop the clock as they move the chains. Now Carr has plenty of time to throw again. He's got a man wide open this time. It's Norman. It takes five guys to finally usher him out of bounds. It's about two, uh, two plays later, it's already third and eight. And this time we got Carr sacked to bring up a 4th and 13. Now 4th and 13, they have to go for it. And I get to the quarterback with my user d line and it's a sack. And that's pretty much game over. With 45 seconds left, it's pretty much impossible for Wyoming to come back. But anyway, Robertson gets a huge pass from Stover, our backup uh, freshman quarterback. And we pound it in later with our backup tight end, Lobo. And we go up 31 to 10. Final play of the game. They hand it off to Wick. He shakes off a defender. He gets the first down, but not much after that. So 31 to 10. The score looks like it's a very comfortable win, but I would say that it's a pretty ugly win overall. As ugly as you can get for a 31 to 10 score line. We had quite a few mistakes, a couple inopportune turnovers. And we were generally frustrated throughout the day by Wyoming's two-man under defense, which Ohio employed very successfully to defeat our high-powered offense. But a win's a win, so we're lucky to just come out here with a victory and keep things going. A uh, loss here to Wyoming would have been disastrous. But looking at the stats, Two interceptions, not the worst, but one for six on third downs. You cannot have one for six on third downs and two interceptions. That really limited our, really limited the number of our successful possessions. And also time of possession, we actually beat Wyoming. That's always a very bad stat for us. That means we're not hitting our deep balls. Usually in a win, we have time of possession that's like much lower than our opponents. And overall rushing and receiving, just not a lot of stats. Even VJ Kelly was held to only 75 yards. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed. And next week we will be taking on the Air Force Academy. So see you next time.